This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Squarespace. Coming up on Destructoid, Saints Row and Deus Ex are exposing themselves. Steam might be coming to the Xbox. Jonathan Holmes has a Star Fox 64 3D review for us. And it looks like another tear-along prediction may have come true. All this and more coming up on Destructoid Live. Hey, welcome to Destructoid. I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville, and here we are again. It's our Friday live show. It's Every a Friday week, live show. Like clockwork. I was expecting you, like clockwork, to say happy Friday, and I was going to interject oh. with happy birthday, Dreamcast. You're 12 today. That means oh. you're finding all kinds of weird hair growing out of you, and yeah. you're going to start thinking about other consoles in ways you never did before. That's disgusting. That's Max. really weird I don't to think want to about. Talk about that. Um, but in addition to being the Dreamcast birthday, it is also our Friday live show, which means giveaways. Uh, uh, today we're going to be giving out two Transformers mice from Razer. We actually don't have them in the studio with us right now, but here is a high quality cellular telephone image. Bam! Right Aww, there. That's what you guys want to get. Uh, we're giving out two of those, um, and they're pretty serious gaming mice. All you have to do to win it to, is tweet. I'm watching the at Detoid show on youtube.com slash Detoid and revision3.com slash watch to win a Transformers mouse. Hashtag Detoid Live. I promise you that fits in a tweet. I tried 28 extra characters to spare. Wow. So, so. We're going to announce the winners at the end of today's show before our Q&A, but do know that this contest is only open to U.S. viewers. Sorry, guys. Yeah, and we're also going to be keeping track of what you say to us on the internet so we can yell at you in real time. Mm -hmm. So let's get on that. Um, first, it's time for the news, right? Oh, you've got I've got the news. news. I heard the news. Okay, let's do this. Um, as we all full well know, I'm really looking forward to Saints Row the Third because I like games that have the dildos in them. Now, today we're lucky enough because we have two pieces of Saints Row news. First off, THQ announced that the, the new game will have almost a whole year worth of downloadable content. Now, this is very vague. As we all know, DLC can take many forms. Saints Row could be supplemented by massive episodic additions to the main story, or it could just have a bunch of downloadable in-game hats for players to wear. Mm. You really can't tell. Now, THQ's Brian Farrell commented saying, we're totally changing up how we keep consumers engaged for a very long time. We intend to create an online digital ecosystem that keeps them interested for a year or more. Now, THQ tested out a hybrid pricing model earlier this year with MX versus ATV Alive, which was priced at 40 bucks, but was supplemented by a very large DLC library. So you could buy the game for cheap and then download more things for it. Uh, wasn't a huge success. Now, Destructoid editor Jim Sterling voiced his concerns that a promise of 40 weeks of DLC might mean that Saints Row is an incomplete game being released at full price. Uh, this news, however, gives me some hope because I've been bothering the Volition guys to put me in the game in some form. What? No, I, I nothing. That. Keep going. Okay. I just want to know, would you guys buy DLC that featured a mission where you have to beat a video game journalist to death with a big dildo? You know, a particular video game journalist with really nice hair on most days, but not today. As Are you talking doing. about Jeff Keighley? I don't know. There's too many Jeffs in this industry. Oh. There's just Jeffs everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, the second piece of the news, because talking about hypothetical DLC release plans is kind of boring, here's some clips from a video Volition put up demonstrating some of the new vehicles and vehicle physics. First, we see a car called the Torch, which is driving. Um, it's cool. I like that. There's the Street Sweeper, which I actually drove when I demoed the game, because I like to clean up the streets. Steel port. And then there's the motherfucking jetpack or jet motorcycle laser gun. Look, ah, get it. I want that. G give me the fucking game already. God damn it. I want the game. Give it to me. Uh, you know what game does not have dildos in it yet, but could if you wanted it to? Minesweeper. Borderlands. I was close. Yes, you were close. Also, another one of my favorites. Uh, the team over at Gearbox put up a survey on their site recently that is going to let you, the gamers, decide how the game turns out. It asks some pretty basic questions like, did you play the first Borderlands? If so, what version of the game did you play? Yada yada. But it also solicits, solicits input on what's important to you in your own gaming experiences. So you can provide input on what you like in your weapons, for instance, or your character classes or your enemies. Even the driving mechanic, which I actually got pretty accustomed to in the first game, so I kind of hope they don't change that up very much. But one question that they did ask was, which three features are most important in your Borderlands experience? With the answer, answer choices being story, weapons, enemies, character classes, bosses, or vehicles. Now, I personally chose weapons, enemies, and character classes, kind of thinking like, why would anybody else choose any of these other things? You know, like, vehicles are cool, but that's not like super important in a game. And uh, 
Apparently, some people disagree with me, obviously, um, since I got flamed for saying that I don't care about the lore in WoW. That was in one of our PAX videos. Um, so I'm guessing you guys probably have some different opinions than me on the matter. So let us know in the chat which three of those six things is most important to you. Again, the choices are story, weapons, enemies, character classes, bosses, and vehicles. If you want to take the survey yourself, you can do so at survey.gearboxsoftware.com. Shouldn't take more than like three minutes to fill out unless you're mentally handicapped, in which case it may take longer than that. And also, if I haven't said it yet, big props to Gearbox for listening to their fans. Not many companies do that nowadays, um, so I appreciate it. I, would, I just wish you guys would hurry up and finish the game already. Just do it. Just get on it. Who cares about what uh, what we think? We're not important. We got a couple questions. Oh, okay. Because we're so important, people want to ask okay. us things. <laughs> um, let's see. Cluable asked, "Could you both wear hats on the next show?" Uh, sh do I own a hat? Does I... it matter? You can get them. They're everywhere. Okay, I'll wear a hat on the next let's show. Let's wear some hats. I don't hats think our producer fun. will like that. But. Um, San Julian Full asked, where did Tara get the shirt? That's actually a good question. Uh, I knew somebody was going to ask that. This is actually a shirt from BlizzCon 2010. Um, so the only place you could get it now would probably be eBay or something. Ooh. But You know, and then they brought these really lame shirts to BlizzCon. Um, sorry, no, this is from two 2009. 2010 was the year that they had the really lame shirts um, that looked like Ed Hardy oh. knockoffs. So... Uh, yeah, that's where I got this shirt. Tara Long, basically an early adopter of WoW. Pretty think much. About it. Um, um, the clip, cl clip Culp said, what happened to your beard, Max? And uh, I shaved it off. I hate shaving my face, but I can't grow a beard, so I'm kind of stuck just looking scruffy most of the time. Patches is Patches. what we call him. Patches a hula hand. <laughs> okay, anyway. If there's one thing that I love about gamers on the internet, you guys, it's that you're like a bunch of terrifying, vicious badgers, and you will burrow through anything to get what you want. Oh, yeah, she adorable. likes badgers. Um, in this case, what you want is exciting news, and what you're burrowing through, apparently, is the Valve forums. Well, um, that was the worst segue I've ever made in the history of the show. Oh my god. The point of my story is, Steam users have discovered a section in the forums of Steam called Xbox Support. This has raised many an eyebrow about the possibility of Steam coming to Xbox Live, which is a mm, crazy possibility. Uh, Valve tends to keep, uh, they play things pretty close to their chest, and Steam is incredibly successful on its own, just on PCs. But the fact that they've begun offering Steam integration with PlayStation 3 is, that's enough to make people wonder if 360 support could be far behind. Of course, on the flip side to this, this could also just be um, support for existing Valve 360 games. What do you guys think? Do you think that Steam on XBLA is a thing in the future? Are you mad that I called you vicious, terrifying badgers? Does it make you want to claw my face? Let us know in the chat. We'll look at it. Let's I'm not mad because it actually prompted me to Google badgers earlier, which then prompted me to Google baby badgers, which then led me to baby animals. Two and then my day up. just went up. Yeah, like, it was from weird. There. It was awesome. Yeah. Okay, more news. Square Enix has officially announced the first round of DLC for Deus Ex Human Revolution, and it's called, aptly enough, The Missing Link. It's set during the three days that Adam Jensen gets trapped onto a freighter with his augmentations disabled, and it explains how he subsequently fought his way to freedom after being tortured by the Bell Tower forces. It promises with it new narrative, characters, and levels, and it'll allow you to rebuild from your character from scratch if that's a thing that you want to do. Square Enix actually just dropped a trailer for it this morning that looks dark and suspenseful, as you might have predicted a Deus Ex DLC trailer to look. And we just got word this morning, actually, that they've shipped over 2 million copies of Deus Ex since launch. So clearly a lot of people are buying this game. Mm. Um, now, everybody knows that you and I always finish oh, every yeah, game no, that we're... we play. I want to know, have you guys finished Deus Ex yet? And if so, do you plan on buying a DLC? Let us know in the comments. That's where they are. Do it. Do it. In his crotch. Uh, also, there's a discussion going on over at Destructoid.com today about whether or not ba boss battles in rehearsal, I accidentally called it bass bottles, and then everybody laughed at me, and then I cried really in the bathroom funny. for 10 minutes. Um, whether or not boss battles were necessary to include in Deus Ex, because some people have been complaining, um, people, I guess, who are into the more stealthy aspects of the game, uh, are complaining about there being boss battles, because, wow, I don't want to have to shoot guys. And that is a direct quote yeah. of someone. I don't know who, but someone. What do you think of boss battles in Deus Ex? Because it is a stealthy game, but at the same time, it is a shooter. Yeah, I, I didn't get to the bosses because I kept hiding in the vent shafts and shooting guys okay, at the ankles. Okay, I shouldn't have asked you. Anyway, um... What are your you thoughts? Wanna... What do you think? You know what? Here's my thoughts. You knew that before you bought the game. You did. So fuck off. And oh. if you didn't... Oh, my goodness. If you oh, cool. didn't, 
than you should have. Okay. Done a little research. There you go. Tara, why don't you take the chat? Journalism. I have a thing that I need to tell everyone about. Now, last episode, we made fun of Nintendo for announcing a really cool snap-on second control pad for the 3DS. Now, sadly, it doesn't seem like that's the dumbest product they're announcing this week. Nintendo... God, I, I'm, I'm having trouble saying this seriously. Nintendo recently unveiled the new Metallic Rose DSi XL. The DSi XL, you know, is in the, the last model of the Nintendo DS. It has a bigger screen and little cameras on both sides of it, but it's still a Nintendo DS, and the Nintendo DS came out in 2004, and we have the 3DS now, and really, Metallic Rose is, uh, that's shiny pink, my friends. That's a girl color for girls. Don't say a word, to No, her. okay. Um, I'll save money. Now, according to Nintendo, 3DS sales are up 260% since the recent price drop to 170 bucks, so it really, it probably seems like a great time to release a giant pink Nintendo DS for 170 bucks. The same price as the newer thing that they just started selling again. Now, I don't mean to rag on Nintendo because I love their games and I, I know they're capable of making excellent systems, but this just seems really ridiculous. And I don't know if I'm just out of touch. I mean, do you guys want a pink DSi XL? Is that like a fun thing that for you to have? I don't, I don't I know. I would just like to say something. Um, I don't know if you guys recall, but a month ago on the show when we announced the flame red color of uh -huh. the 3DS, I made a tear-along prediction, and that prediction was that they should make... Actually, maybe it wasn't so much a prediction as it was a piece of advice for Nintendo that they should make a pink 3DS. Or a DS, because that shit would sell. And look! Look what we have today! Oh my god. Tara, Tara, um, oh my god, breaking news. Read a word from our sponsor, please. Oh, okay. All right then. Squarespace. It is the fastest, fastest and easiest way to create a high-quality blog portfolio or any kind of website you like. It's fully hosted and takes care of all the tricky details of getting your website up and running with absolutely nothing to download, install, or set up. You can choose from a wide variety of professionally designed templates and customize every single element of your site with its simple point and click interface. There's also a broad selection of page types ranging from blogs to galleries to contact forms, all of which you can snap together to build the website that you want. So if you want an adorable slideshow of pandas yawning on your website, you can drop that in there, no problem. And if you have any questions at all, they've got 24-7 customer support, so somebody's always there to help you out if you need. For a free two-week trial, just click on over to squarespace.com slash destructoid, and if you decide to buy, enter the coupon code destructoid9 at checkout to get 10% off your order. Actually, I have a, I have a Squarespace site. Oh, that's it's, wonderful. It's uh, maxscoville.squarespace.com. I write stories there. You should go look at them because they're. Are there funny pictures? Because I don't yes, go to. Yes, there's a funny picture. I'm working on getting more words. pictures there. The stories I've been working on, though. Anyway, okay. uh, we have a couple questions really quick. Um, oh. Y05077 asks Tara, can I get next week's lottery numbers? Math yes. major. Yes. Um, 26, 2, 12, 41. Uh, 19 and 35, no, 36. Cool, cool great. 36. Tara, Tara Long prediction, you heard it right here. Yep. Okay, okay. Um, as we get closer to the holiday sy season, not the system, holiday season, there are going to be more and more games released each week until we all inevitably play all of them and just die from having too much fun or aneurysms. Whichever. Um, now this week, Destructoid editors were hard at work reviewing some of the latest games. Jim Sterling checked out Warhammer 40k Space Marine, and in, in spite of a brief campaign mode and some vexing design, design decisions, Jim praised the game for wonderfully tight production that brings an authenticity and intensity befitting Games Workshop's beloved universe. He gave it an 8 out of 10. Jim also reviewed Blood Rain Betrayal, which he panned for awful design, a counterintuitive art style, and an obscenely cheap approach to difficulty, and claimed it should only be approached by the most masochistic and deranged of gamers. It got a 2 out of 10. Ouch, that's rough. Meanwhile, Dale North played the Ico and Shadow of the Colossus collection, which re-releases PlayStation 2 classics Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, except now they're in full, beautiful HD. Uh, he called the collection a dream come true for fans of the titles and implored anyone who hasn't played these games before to go pick them up. These two great games, remastered in HD, being sold for a total of $40, earns the Ico and Shadow of the Colossus collection a 9.5. Meanwhile, Jonathan Holmes, former host of this show and kindest man in the universe, mm. reviewed Star Fox 64 3D and was good enough to send us a video. Holmesy, come forth! Hey everybody, Jonathan Holmes here from Destructoid.com. How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well. I am here to review Star Fox 64 for the 3DS. Uh, Star Fox 64 3D is its technical title. 
It is a straight adaptation of Star Fox on the Nintendo 64, which I believe came out in 1997. It's a very loyal adaptation of pretty much the best Star Fox game ever made. How do you describe Star Fox to someone who hasn't played it? Uh, I guess you could take the, all the space and air battles from Star Wars and take out all the people, take out all the Jedis and the seriousness and just leave in the Muppets and have them really overdramatically talk about how serious their space battles are while they kill each other. I got somebody on my tail! Hang on guys, help is on the way! I won't let you get away from me! There's no parachutes in these planes. These Muppets are really blowing each other's asses away. I guess you could say Mass Effect is like Battlestar Galactica. Star Fox is like Pigs in Space. And personally, I prefer Pigs in Space. So that works for me. Uh, what else can I tell you about the game? Yeah, it's a 3D shoot 'em up It's pretty short, which is probably my least favorite thing about it. You can beat it probably in about an hour but there's branching paths and a lot of variation in your journey from the beginning to the end so if you go about things right you can play the game in multiple different ways I think each time you play it it's seven levels but there's 15 levels total so it'll take two or three times to see the whole thing there's also a really good multiplayer component now that is a lot like Mario Kart except in the air and with guns so you're shooting your friends flying around an arena and picking up new power-ups that are totally unique to the multiplayer mode. Uh, there are even the little question mark boxes just like in Mario Kart, so those who enjoy local multiplayer will enjoy that. Sad that it's not online. It's not as fully featured as I would have hoped overall, but the game looks great in 3D. They revamped the graphics so it doesn't look like an N64 game, it looks much closer to it's a PS2 level of graphics, and I had a really good time with it. So I'll give you a score. You want a score? Yes. I don't even know how these work. I'll give it 8.5. Or cut that part out. No, we're if leaving. You it. don't want it. Yeah. Stay in. Okay, thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye, Holmes. Thanks, J Ho. Ah, oh, Holmesy. Star Fox 64 3D comes out today, actually, so go pick that up if you want. Um, that's pretty much all of our news today. Starfix. Yeah, Starfix. Oh. Good one. Uh, before we announce the winners of our Transformers Mouse Contest, I want to publicly declare once and for all that Max and I, along with our comrade Anthony Carboni, will be doing an entire playthrough of Dead Island this weekend with some of the folks uh, from Bitmob. Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix were nice enough to provide us with a huge studio to play in and TVs and Xboxes and plenty of food and alcohol. The entire thing is going to be live streamed starting at around 7 p.m. Pacific tonight. That's in like three and a half hours, you guys. It's going to be on twitch.tv slash new challenger live. Remember that URL because it's a new one. It's the official live stream of Anthony Carboni's new show, New Challenger, which I happened to be a guest on yesterday. If you want to check out the episode that we did where we talked about Dead Island, that is at revision3.com slash new challenger. And uh, let's announce those contest winners. Let's do it. Uh, who do we have for contest winners? Um, we've got Jax Out, Patronus Opacus. Sweet. Sean Detman. Wait, there How many? should only be two. Only two? Oh, well, Sean Detman, you get this picture that I drew. <laughs> it is right here. It's a picture of a transformer holding a mouse. So you sort of get a transformer mouse, sort of. I'm sorry. It's it's literally exactly the same it's as a Transformers the same thing. mouse. It might be difficult to game with it, but you can have it anyway. Okay, let's take some viewer questions. Uh, if you guys have good questions relating to video games or anything else, just ask us. Um, let's see. Catley J asks, who's your favorite Spice Girl? Ginger. I should say Ginger. Yeah. But I'm going to actually go with Posh. Oh, fuck you. Why would you pick Posh? Why? She's, She's horrible. Why? She's the most boring one. Well, maybe now in her old age. No, but always. Back then. How did she survive? How is she the one that survived the longest? I don't know. I thought Ginger was pretty boring back then. Now she she's did like nudie, all nudie nudie photos. Well, yeah, afterwards. No, about way before, their... like early nineties. Well, God, no, you're that's Spice Girls. Why I don't like who is the bus driver in Spice World? Who? Meatloaf. Everyone knows that. Jesus. Okay, next question. I was. I don't know. Okay. I like Spice Girls. Um, let's see. The awesome hustler asks for you, Max. Ooh. Kiss, marry, or kill any game developers you want. Um, he did include Cliffy B as inspiration if you want to. Okay. Um, if I had to kiss one, it'd be Will Wright. 
No. No, 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 no. No, Gabe Newell. He's just like, oh, Gabe Newell. I like um, how he said kiss. Marry? Um, I'd probably marry Peter Molyneux, because he'd be whimsical. I'd come home and there'd be fucking rose petals everywhere, just all over the place. Um, and kill? I don't want to say that. That's terrible. We'll write. Okay. I like Will Wright, though. Yeah, that's why it's funny. It's oh, fucking okay. made Sim City. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Will Wright. I'm gonna All right. blow you oh, up with a hurricane. Here's a good question. Kick ass 667 says Skyrim or Saints Row. Really? Is that a good question? It is a good question. We've asked we've gotten that question literally every live stream. Oh really? Both I've never motherfuckers, seen it before. you dumb guys. What is wrong okay. with you? Get okay. both of them. Don't pay rent. Um, let's see. Fuck your student loans. Go buy both those games. San Julian. Full asks, BF3 or Modern Warfare 3, please please answer me, need help. Skyrim or Saints Row, get one of those. Uh, personally, I would recommend Battlefield 3 over Modern Warfare, just because I think it should be better. I feel like you're probably gonna buy Modern Warfare by accident. I mean, I bought <laughs> like, God, I bought like three copies of Black Ops just by accident. That's why they make so much money. You just, you know, you come home and you're like, oh, what's in my pocket? Oh, shit, it's a game. All, All right. of a sudden, billions um, of dollars. That's how they get see. Kanye to play it, you know. Vega XP. Vega Punk PHT asks, "What old franchise do you two want to see make a surprise comeback?" You know what I really liked um, that I haven't seen since my old Genesis days was Road Rash. Did you guys play Ooh, that? Road yeah, Rash actually, Three was fucking there awesome. There was talk of that. Um, I believe Midway was working on a, on a revamp, oh, but really? then they then they went under. Um, there is a possibility of that that could come back at, at some point. I'm um, sure it will at some point. It's such a good game. It is. Road um, Rash is I'm not sure if it'll translate well to like modern times though. Because eh, right. I could see people like just putting too many features this, in it. We got this question it, on Podtoid actually. I said Eternal Champions, one of my old favorite Sega fighting games. If they gave that the new Mortal Kombat combat treatment, I'd be so happy. Um, also, Alfred Chicken. Uh, which movie, oh, Knight Rider 1919 asks, which movie franchise would you like to see made into a badass video game other than Aliens or Robocop? Um, Ooh, that's a good one. Um, damn, I'd like to one. see the Clueless films translated into a game that lets hmm. you pick your outfit for the day, because guess what? That's a fucking money maker, and nobody made that after that movie. Yeah, probably because they didn't want to pay for the uh, the rights to the Clueless franchise, but I bet you there's a DS game. I guarantee you, you could have made your own version of that game, and they would not have sued you. Um, Let's what ask. Do I, what do I want to see? What do I want to see? Um, uh, Tango and Cash. What would a video game like that be? It'd be fucking stupid. You'd just dance. You'd just dumb. Just dance your feelings out. One more, One question, more question, our final guys. question. What are we gonna do? Turkey Slayer 22 asks, which Pokemon would you punch in the face if you had a chance? Oh, uh, my answer is all of them. It'd take we a while. I think we've talked about which Pokemon. Go watch our Pokemon episode. We talked yeah, about that. Yeah, go watch our Pokemon episode. Uh, if I, specifically right now, the one that's the vulture that's wearing a diaper. It's like a skull diaper. It's really fucking dumb. I think it's yeah. terrible. It's like Cubone crossed with Chansey, if that's possible. It's horrifying. Anyway, enough enough. I don't know about your business. Pokemon lingo, Max. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, let's wrap this let's thing wrap up. This up. Go follow us on Twitter. We're at The Toyd Show. Um, I'm also on Twitter at Tara Longest, and he is Max Scoville, but you don't need to follow him. I'm funnier. He tweets too much. I'm much funnier. Um, and also be sure to tune into our Dead Island live stream tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific. Last reminder, twitch.tv slash new challenger live. There's gonna be plenty of drunken debauchery and public humiliation to go around. So tune in for that. And MASH Tactics starts right now on twitch.tv slash destructoid. So go watch that. Go say hi to John Carnage for me. Have a good night, guys. Good night.